warning for you. Uh, the techniques and skills uh, depicted in my videos are extremely dangerous. Uh, it is not the uh, intent of myself or anybody working out with me or of YouTube probably to encourage uh, you viewers to attempt any of these techniques or drills without proper professional supervision and training. Uh, attempting to do so can result in severe injury or death. Uh, do not attempt any of these techniques or drills that I show in these videos uh, without supervision of a certified instructor and a checkup to make sure that you are in the proper health to uh, uh, involve yourself in uh, these physical activities. Uh, again, I'm, you know, I'm, uh, I disclaim any liability from any damage or uh, injuries of any type that, you know, viewers or users of the information contained in these videos may uh, encounter uh, from the use of this information. Uh, you know, I'm basically doing this for, uh, it's being presented for academic study only, and then you get with a uh, qualified you know, uh, darling, instructor, and you uh, you go through it with somebody who knows what they're doing. Uh, and if you are gonna use force on force uh, with air guns, always seek out uh, knowledgeable and uh, properly prepared facilities and instructors uh, to use that in. Okay, so step one. Step one is distract the threat. This is a very important step because it answers the always asked questions, when should I go for the disarm? Every instructor gets asked this question and they usually leave the uh, students with too little information. I've heard answers like, uh, only you can decide and you will know. Uh, and I've used that you will know yourself. Uh, any instructor who leaves you with answers like that has little or no real life uh, fighting experience and should be avoided if you are looking to learn self-defense. Uh, on the other hand, you know, a lot of them are also trying to avoid uh, legal liabilities. Uh, well, ultimately you will have to decide. There are lots of things that need to be explained that can help you make your decision. Let's start from the beginning. For some reason, your situational awareness has let you down and now a firearm is being pointed in your direction at close range. That's the first thing you have to understand. You have already failed if this guy is standing in front of you with a gun. I mean, you're at the ATM, you're getting money in, it's late at night, nobody's around, and some guy comes walking up. Lose five minutes, push cancel, get your card back, and go to your car. Get in your car and drive to another ATM. They're all over the place nowadays. Or get in your car, move to another area of the parking lot, let this guy finish his transaction and go in and handle it. Or, if you're more cavalier, when the guy comes walking up, make sure that your gun is ready to roll, make sure you're ready to deploy it, keep an eye on this guy, and when he goes to make his move, beat him to the draw and drop him on the ground. His body's gonna be laying over there, your body's, you're gonna still be standing, your card is still gonna be in the ATM, it's going to be very easy to explain the circumstances that this guy came up to rob you and you beat him to the draw. Otherwise, your positions would be reversed. You'd be dead over there because you're the bad guy. Or maybe you won the gunfight, you're over here and here's the blood over by the ATM. The evidence is going to tell the story. So again, just to go back, if you are sitting there and a gun is in your face, that's already your fault. Your awareness lets you down. That's the fact. Your first level of defense has failed and now you're in trouble. Cops hear it all the time from mugging victims. I don't know where he came from. He was in front of me all of a sudden. Now even the best of us can make a mistake, especially if something has distracted you. Like you have a personal problem, uh, somebody's in the hospital and you need to get some money right away, you're in a hurry. So, you know, something had happened. However, if you're highly trained, your reaction will be automatic. There will be no thought. The visual impetus of a weapon pointing your direction will force an immediate reaction, which will give you a great chance for success because the threat will still be in the thought process of trying to issue you a command 
turn around, put your hands in the air, something like that, rather than thinking about pulling the trigger. So in other words, I'm here at the ATM. In the mirror, I see somebody coming up behind me. I turn to look, all of a sudden I see a gun coming up towards me. Boom, if I've trained hard and I've gotten this reaction to be subconscious, I'm gonna boom, immediately go into the move and I'm gonna disarm this guy before he has a chance to do anything. It became a conditioned reflex by practicing it over and over and over again. Now, again, you're not that guy. You weren't aware, for some reason your first line of defense failed. You turned, you didn't act immediately because of the visual impetus and responded to that with a conditioned reflex. So now here you are with your hands in the air and this guy's telling you he wants something from you. So that's where we're really looking at here. Again, if you want to be able to uh, survive attempted assassination attempts, you need to be in that situation where the visual impetus immediately sparks a conditioned reflex. If you're a law-abiding, okay, so let's go on to the next thing. If you are a law-abiding citizen, it is very unlikely that you will face an assassination attempt. It's more likely that if you follow the commands of this guy, now that he's got the gun on you, you will be left alone. But again, with a gun in your face, how comforting is you will probably be left alone. To get a better understanding of these situations, you have to become familiar with things like threat displays and pre-attack indicators. Check out several YouTube videos on uh, these subjects and become familiar with the subject matter. This, is all, this, these, this information is all gonna help you make a decision of, do I need to go for a disarm because this guy is gonna kill me? Uh, if you know how to do the disarm and you are sure you can do it well, and you have a gun in your face, your immediate assumption is that the guy is display and your immediate assumption is that the guy is displaying a pre-attack indicator, then when do you make your move? That's what we're really looking at. You use the same thing that got you in trouble to help you decide when to get the threat in trouble. You were distracted, that's why you didn't keep up your uh, your awareness, your first level of defense. So now you have to look for something that has distracted the threat, or you have to cause your own distraction. Since this is not an assassination attempt, time, albeit a short amount of time, will be in your favor. There is going to be time taken uh, for the threat to make his attentions clear to you, and then you will have to take time to comply with his, uh, with his instructions. If the threat turns to look at an audio or visual distraction, a car pulls in and there's lights, he turns and looks, this is a great impetus to launch a disarm or escape. Just talking to him will cause his mental resources to be used to comprehend you, or even just to tell you to shut up, or to get your hands higher. You can repeat what he asks you. Ask him a question, or tell him what you are doing in order to comply with his demands. So when he says, get your hands up, how high? Now he has to answer that, and once he answers that, boom, you go for your move. That's a good time to go for the move. You've distracted him. Uh, let me see. Also, telling him what you're doing. I'm gonna get my wallet out now. Now your hand is already moving, and you could use that as the distraction. He's gonna be looking where your hand's going. He's gonna see you already moving and you use that as a distraction to actually make your move for the weapon. Let's see. Uh, again, all of these things will cause him to divide his attention. For greater effect, you can uh, combine verbal distractions with non-threatening movements that will help you jumpstart your disarm while disguising your ultimate attentions. Even a quick glance to an area behind the threat may distract him enough to give you your opening. It will be much safer to launch your attack while the threat is distracted than to attempt the attack while the threat is focusing on you 100%. So, what does this mean? What this means is that it's important that you practice talking while practicing doing your disarms and that you practice for assassination attempts. You won't have time to come up with ideas on the spot if you haven't practiced them in advance. If the threat is acting in a way you consider too threatening, you need to make an immediate distraction and you need to start your disarm almost simultaneously. Think things out this way. When the threat does X, I will do Y. And in general, what we're looking at, if the threat looks away somewhere else, 
I will do a discipline. If I get the threat to answer a question or to reissue a command, I will do the disarm. If I start moving in what looks like a non-threatening way and he's looking at my movement, that's a great time to go for the disarm. Again, only you can tell in the heat of the moment, but this is a way for you to have some ideas to be able to tell, because that's what most instructors don't tell you. When will you tell? Again, looking at those things uh, on uh, on uh, those videos, on threat displays and pre-attack indicators are a prerequisite. Now let's look at uh, the second step. Okay, now let's look at the second step, clearing the muzzle. In this step, we wanna be clear of the muzzle's line of attack as quickly as possible. The best way to do this is to twist the upper body as we step laterally and slightly forward so that we can complete our step, our fighting center is on or near the center line, and we have flanked the weapon. So what I want to do is my hands are in the air, I'm going to be stepping and turning. This hand doesn't have to move much. It's going to be spun by my body's twist, and all of a sudden the handgun is going to be here somewhere. And the tip of the muzzle is going to be over here, down here, somewhere in this area. I don't want to be perpendicular to the muzzle because if the round is shot, there's going to be those hot gases and uh, other discharge out of the front of the weapon and it will come perpendicular to the weapon. So I want my eyes beyond that. Now one thing I do is I close an eye when I shoot. So while I'm doing this movement, I also close an eye. Everything's going to be right here for me to grab so I don't have to worry too much about depth perception. I know where that thing is because my eyes were open here and as I go for the move, just like I do when I'm practicing a draw stroke, this eye closes and then I come up with my weapon on my front sight. That's something that I've always done. Let's see. It's important that our hands clear the line of attack also. That's why this hand has to come down and that's gonna put in position when we get ready to control the weapon. If you're a hand gunner, again, this movement will be somewhat similar to a draw stroke while you're stepping off the line. So now we're gonna look at some examples of this uh, while I'm te teaching the class. We're also gonna, gonna look at some uh, examples of the, uh, of the distractions uh, from the classwork. And let's see, again, the only contingency uh, that we really have to deal with is when the weapon's held higher, higher, you know, we're close to that muzzle flash, so we wanna make sure we're out of the way. Again, we wanna make sure we're closing that eye. Uh, you know, I learned to shoot with one eye, my non-dominant eye closed. Uh, I've continued to shoot like that over the years, even though a lot of uh, school of thought has gone to keeping both eyes open. I shoot with one eye closed. Uh, one of the main reasons why I've continued to keep this eye closed is because during combat, sometimes stuff is flying around. Again, you got hot gases, you have uh, material uh, flying up from uh, uh, ricocheting off from a bullet hitting or just jumping around, you know, this type of stuff. I like to have an eye protected uh, by my eyelid. Now, if something comes up in this area, hot gases or uh, you know some uh, debris from a bullet hitting nearby, this eye is closed, it's protected. If this eye takes any problem, all I have to do is open the other eye and I still have an eye to see with. If both my eyes are open and something splashes in one eye, it's probably splashing in the other eye. Uh, again, I still shoot, you know, I shoot rifles, pistols, I shoot everything with one eye closed. It's worked for years, it still works, and I'm gonna keep doing it because of the fact of I have a better chance to preserve vision should this eye become injured. Uh, let's see. That's pretty much it, and let's get on to some video footage for you. type of training you have to uh, disable the uh, trigger guard and what I do is I just put some uh, duct tape around here to disable the trigger guard the reason you want to disable the trigger guard it sounds like a stupid statement but it will uh, break your finger off if you're in here and somebody goes to do a disarm and there the finger breaks okay dislocates so you 
it's nice to tape this up with whatever you're using. Uh, we're going to be using some airsoft, so we're not going to be able to tape that up because we have to actually shoot. But, uh, you know, by the time you're using airsoft, you know when to stop and uh, to be a little more careful. But in the beginning, always tape that up. The first step of four steps is clear. That's what we're talking about today, clear. And I see a lot of guys, they'll do these disarms, they'll just reach up and snatch the weapon. Okay? You don't want to rely on your hand pushing this to the side to clear the muzzle, okay? You want to use as many things you can. You want to have multi-layers to get out of the way of this. The other thing I see a lot of people and other ones do is they do grab the top of the muzzle here. On a, on a semi-automatic, that's just not practical. You can grab this tight enough to keep the slide from sliding back, but in all likelihood, you're not going to get that kung fu grip just exactly when you want it or when it needs to be there. If he shoots and this slide starts sliding back, the front side post is going to rip across your fingers like you're touching a hot stove. And of course, that's going to give the natural instinctive pullback. And now this guy has the gun on. The other problem is, is there could be recoil as he shoots. I miss. Of course, the problem with both those things is my body's still here right in front of the muzzle. So he decides to shoot, or he's getting ready to shoot, and I make my move, and he has some type of twitch, or, or he's just quick, you know, that type of stuff. Now here I am right in front of the bullet, okay? That's the problem. I don't want to be here when the bullet gets here. When you clear, you have to move off of where he's shooting, okay? So I have to get out of this line of attack. I have to get off this line of attack. That's the big thing. I have to clear the muzzle. That's what we're talking about, clearing. Okay, I can't just grab here. Those old techniques like that are for when they use revolvers, not automatics. This was one of the oldest techniques I learned back when I was a kid. This is 35 years ago, okay? Not everybody was carrying automatics back then. Nowadays, just about everybody's carrying automatics. So this grip right here is completely antiquated. Because of the slide, the fact that the slide can go back, it's also bad because recoil, I can miss because of recoil, okay? So I have a couple problems with that. That's why we're not gonna be grabbing here. Also, I'm gonna move first, okay? So as we were saying, this movement is kinda like our draw stroke, our initial draw stroke. And we're gonna step, which you should always have a step with your draw stroke. Again, you get off this guy's line of attack okay, in a gunfight. Also here, if there's a gunfight, we just don't have a gun. Not yet, you gotta realize that we're gonna have a gun. So again, when we're talking about clearing, this is what we're talking about. We're talking about getting off, getting off the line of attack. That's all it takes. And again, I'm gonna have one hand high and one hand low when I do this. Okay, so here I am here. This is how it looks. I'm just gonna be here like this. Now if that gun goes high, if there's recoil, my hand is still right here. Okay, if he goes to pull that gun down, well, my hand's down here. Everything's gonna be okay for me. If he steps back, if he step back, I still got my hands here. I've got a way to capture this from two directions. I'm not just relying on this perfect uh, Bruce Lee snatch, okay? It's not what the average person can do. And in light of the variables that this guy may introduce, including recoil of the weapon, it's just not practical to try to reach out there and snatch it. Now, there are guys out there who have been training the martial arts for years, okay? They've been practicing their technique for years, and they're probably pretty good at it. It's probably gonna be pretty effective. But do you want probably, or do you want as close to perfect as you can get? That's the object, is get close to perfect, as close to perfect as possible. I mean, we're not playing with toy guns if we're gonna be using this in a real situation. So we have to take all that into account. We can't have something that's gonna work nine out of 10 times. We can't have something that's gonna work, you know, seven out of 10 times. We can't have something that's gonna work as long as this guy does this, or as long as this guy does that. We need something that's gonna work under the most circumstances possible. And again, bringing the gun up, this is our move. I'm coming off of the center line, and I'm, getting, I'm building a defense to attack the weapon, okay? I'm building this defense so I can attack the weapon, and I'm getting off the center line. You can't just snatch this thing, okay? Some people can, and you may be able to do it most of the time. But you want something that's gonna get you off that center line to avoid that bullet all the time, okay? As close to all the time as possible. Again, so I'm here like this. When I feel the time is right, I'm just stepping off, okay? And again, I'm twisting my body. I'm not just stepping this way where all this has to cross the muzzle. If I'm twisting this, I'm off much quicker. You see, I'm already off right here. 
The more I step, the better. But I'm bringing this up here so he can't follow me with his weapon. That's the clear. That's all there is to it. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to have Mark. Uh, excuse me, Mark. That's my uh, one of my other trade partners. We're going to have uh, Scott take an airsoft gun. Okay. And Scott, you're allowed to shoot. Okay. So, so stay right there for now. Because we have a backstop over here. Okay. So now uh, I'm allowing you to shoot me. And as soon as you see me try to do something sneaky, shoot me. Okay. So you point the weapon at me. Safety's off. Relax, okay. Now you're trying to give me some commands, like tell me. Give like, me all your money. Boom, there it is. That's all it is, guys. I cleared the I cleared the muzzle. There was a real uh, medium. Let's see if it's shooting. Somebody shoot at. I don't know if you saw the pellet come out. I don't know if you heard it. I mean, it went all over the place. We shoot with pretty uh, hefty uh, uh, which will be the handgun. On his, uh, so we have this, we have my line of attack on the center line, okay which is also right on his fighting center. So what you have to do is you have to get your whole body clear of my line of attack. Okay, so now do your step and look at where you're at. That's it, buddy. Okay? Now you, okay, you gotta lean, you gotta lean back a little bit, there's no doubt about it. When we go for control though, then we're gonna come back in like this. Right? So go ahead. Go ahead. See where your right hand was? Yeah, your right hand was right on the muzzle actually, so you gotta make sure that that's safe. Okay. Yeah, and go. That's what you want to do. Okay, now start from here where your hands are up a little bit, and then just like a draw stroke, step to the side, and bam, that's it right there. Good. Now you see how far you're clearing that center line? You're clearing it huge. But well, you're clearing the uh, my fight, my line of attack. Now you're clearing my line of attack. Good. Hands up. Bring this up high. And step forward and stretch. Yeah. Well, no. What happens when you bring this up? That allows you to fall further. When you bring this up, it actually moves you in the direction that you bring it up. Just think about the draw. Just think about the draw. Nice quick draw. Step this up. That man, that was quick. Okay, what's happening now? To, well, you're kind of doing like this kind yeah. of thing. And what you got to do is you got to bring the knee up. Bring the knee up. You're like bringing the foot up. Bring the knee up. Kind of twist your cross. Don't worry about it. Let's just bring this up to here. Swept this down here. Hold this one. So I'm going to be like this. My hands up here. That's what I want. See how this is raising down? This is raising down and twisting. So I'm here. This isn't really moving much. This is right here. Okay? So again, I've got to get off the center line as quick as possible. I want to distract. Uh, distract we've got to add distract. Or, I mean, we're going to distract. So the first thing we've got to do is distract. But once we've distracted this guy, we've got moving. We've got him thinking. We've got him hopefully answering a question. And now, boom, right here. I'm way off of this thing. So again, just this is coming down, and this is here. So I don't really have to move that a lot. A big step, and over. And by a big step, I mean a high knee. Bam, over here, coming out of this way. Bam. So this is coming down and twisting, and this just naturally comes across where I want it to be. So bam, right here. Again, the draw stroke would be like this, but we've got to twist a little bit. We've got to change this just a little bit and leave this guy right where he is. Don't move this guy. So am I getting off it? Am I completely yeah. clearing it? So I'm completely clearing the line of attack. And I'm now controlling here, getting ready to control. So I'm going to be here, and I'd be here like this. That's where the control is going to come in. I'm going to be here, and I can lean right in for my control. So again, here, bam. Bam, and I've got control. I'm not going to help faster than that. Okay, that hand has to go down. Yeah, that's where the speed's going to come from. Now that's, 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 that's fast. That's fast. Now try not to even hit this thing. That's fast, right? That's fast. Try not to lean too far back. Okay, yeah, you got plenty of room. So you can jump forward a little more or something not there. It's right there. 
Yes, you don't really have to think about this here. See, you don't have to think about those two movements. Yeah. I like to just think it's good. Right, right. Yeah, it takes away a lot of the thought process. The less the thing that you have to do, the more you can, the less extra thing you have to do, the more you can focus on the things that you need to really focus on. But, I'm going to try it with a gun, and uh, again, one thing I talk about when I'm uh, teaching karate is I talk about you need something that starts the key, and, and what I'm saying when I'm saying that is you need some way to start the movement immediately where you won't uh, give him a sign that you're going to move, okay? So with this move, this would be the key that's going to turn on the engine, that's going to get you moving out of the way. This is what you really want to focus on. And again, you're going to say, I'm going for my wallet, and boom, as it starts to move down. Anytime in here, now I'm not going to telegraph it, because he already knows this is moving to my wallet. Okay, I'm going to get my wallet. Now at any time as I'm doing this, I just, I just move it as fast as I can, and this is the key that's going to start the engine that will cause the movement to occur. So we're here, we start to move down, and boom, right out of the way. Right. Well, we were having a problem with the other hand. This is the time to get out of the way. This hand has to come down, and this has to get out of the way. That's it. So, bam, bam. Okay. The biggest question I always get asked is, when do I go for the disarm? That's a personal question that only you can answer. There are some things you can look for that can help you answer this question. First thing is, how nervous does the guy look? Now these, these are by no means definite, okay? But if this guy looks desperate and nervous, this is a guy who's probably more likely to shoot you than somebody who's calm, looks like he's done this before. You haven't seen his face on wanted posters, so he probably hadn't killed anybody yet. So that would be something where you might just give the guy your money, okay? The guy looks nervous, shaky, if he just looks like the kind of guy that you thought is going to kill you and he's getting ready to kill you, you have to go through this technique. But one of the big things you want to do is you want him preoccupied on something else, okay? If he is solely focused on watching you, waiting for you to move, and then shooting, he probably has a better chance of shooting you, okay? Because he's concentrating on it. But if you can get his mind focusing on something else for a second, that's when your best opportunity is going to arise because he's thinking about something else. He's not thinking about shooting that gun. So again, let's start off. Okay, again, Mark, you're allowed to shoot me if you wish. Uh, I, actually, I want you to shoot me if you can. Okay. So again, he's got the gun on me. I've got to clear the step to the side and twist while posting my hands in a position to where I can grab for the weapon and gain control after I've cleared. Okay. So again, we're in the clearing stage, and he's asking me for money. Okay. What do you want, sir? All your money. You want my money? Now. Okay, my money is in my back pocket, okay? I'm going to move to get my money. See how well that worked. He actually took his hand off, and then he had no chance. I think I actually stopped the trigger, yeah. finger from pulling, because I got it locked between the hands. So that's a good control position. Okay, so again, what do you want? Money. Want money? So why do you see the trigger? Make sure you're on the trigger. I'm slapping his hand. It's actually coming out of the trigger, uh, I think, out of the trigger guard. Okay, so sir? How can I help you? I want everything you have. Okay, my money's in my pocket. I'm going to get the money out of my pocket. What happened? How can you get shoot? you got to try to, you got to shoot. Okay. okay. i got to have that. Keys. Money. Money. Now. Money. 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 Okay, my wallet is in my back pocket. I'm going to turn and I'm going to get my wallet Stop out. Stop talking. Get... What can I do for you? Money. Right now. Okay, my keys are in. This? I said money, all of it. You don't want my keys? Like, you keep thinking a question, I think it works a lot better. Okay. What do you want? Empty your pocket. And everything you have. Everything. everything. I have a note to my wife. Do you want the note to my I'm wife? Okay. That's, I mean, that's a secret. <laughs> The secret is you got to get this guy thinking about what he, you need to get him thinking about an answer. Once he starts thinking about an answer, he's got to turn that off before he can shoot you, okay? Things, and again, the big thing is distraction. I mean, this could be a military situation. 
where uh, you don't speak the language, something like that. And so uh, you would still need some way to distract this guy. And not holding the hands up high enough, give it, give it a sigh, look it up in the sky and bring your hands down just a little bit. Anything that can get this guy thinking about what are you doing and making him reissue a command. And when he reissues the command, then you could also uh, use that as your distraction to start the, uh, to turn the key over with his hand coming down again to start the motor. So again, there's other ways to distract without having a conversation, a look, a turn, turn him way over here. Anything to get this guy to issue a command and you're waiting for him to issue the command. As soon as he issues the command, boom, that's gonna be your uh, distraction and now you can go for your move. Keep your hands in the air. Okay, there it is right there. Okay, now I actually have to get my finger off of the uh, index point. Give me the money. Uh, it's in my okay, give me the money. Give me the money. Okay, get the money. Oh, I got a little bit there. <laughs> give me the money. I need the money. I, was, I mean, I was over here, there was no sense in pulling the trigger. Get your hands in there. Okay, what I want is I want you to give me the money. Give me all your money. Okay, get the money, get the money. Now this time, do let this touch me, but don't focus on that. Focus on just turning the key over and getting out of the way, okay, clearing the money. Build the distraction and then clear the money. Okay, I want all the money right now, I'm gonna shoot you. I've killed 18 people, I've 19 is on my right list. Now. Okay, get the money. Give me the money, give me the goddamn money. Give me the money, I need the money. I want all your money, okay, get your money out. Give me the money, give me the money. I need the money right now. Don't tell me you don't have the money. That's a bad idea. Okay, give me your money, I want all your money. Okay, give me the money. I believe, if this comes down, look at the shoulder. See what I'm saying? The shoulder's up here, the shoulder's over there. It's enough. Then all you need is that little tiny twist. Just that little thing, while that leg goes in the air. Just zoop, there it is. Zoop, there it is. Zoop, there it is. Now, try not to lean quite so much as twist, you know what I'm saying? That's what you want. Right. Give me, you don't even have safety glasses. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Edit. Yeah, yeah. Can you uh, right, you're like, superimpose glasses on me? We're like 18 times and no glasses. Yeah. Yeah. What are you saying? Get the, I want your hands in the air. I want all your money. Give me all your money. Come on, come on. Give me the money. Come on. There you go. Where's the money? Give me the money. Right down here. Give me the guy darn money. I'm out of here. Oh, I have one left. One more. Oh, sure. So, I mean, that was, uh, that was 12 tries. You failed twice. And it was bad that you guys didn't do a good distraction. All right, man, I need all your money. Give me all your money right now. Going for it right now. Okay, get the money. Do it now. It's, it, you're so much slower when you have to think. Yeah. Because you actually are pretty quick when you, uh, you don't have to think. Start working on uh, control in a little bit. Trying to see how I'm getting the control ready to go. Okay, so anyway, so that's our uh, that's our clear. Let now we, now you got to do something. So we need you to do about a hundred. Well, you know whatever. You tell him not shooting you. Well, I hope I'm able to shoot you a couple times. I'm pretty sure you will. I love 